Now let's go through problems about mixing chemicals. First, let's cover some background information. We're dealing with situations where we have two separate amounts of the same chemical, but they have different strengths or different concentrations. Because often chemicals are mixed with something else like water, we want to be able to create mixtures with a very specific concentration. So this video pertains to problems of that sort. So when we have a chemical, some amount of it, that has a specific concentration, that is basically the strength of a solution when one chemical is mixed in something else. So the solution can be a very strong solution that would have a high percentage, or it could be a weaker solution that has a lower percentage. This solution might be a 20% concentration. And we know that the chemical that is in there at 20% is mixed all up throughout this solution, but it is helpful for us to look at it as 20% of this entire amount. So the amount that is our actual chemical is 20% of this entire volume. We can even think of it like that 20% of the chemical being separated out to really see 20% of the whole volume. So if we imagine dividing that chemical out from the solution so that it was all together and not completely mixed up, we might see it takes up 20% of the volume of this mixture. And for a stronger solution, let's call this one 70%, even though it is all mixed up, we can envision separating the amount that is the chemical to the entire volume. We can think of the chemical taking up 70% of this entire volume. Now there's some other things that we should understand about taking two amounts and mixing them together. What will be the concentration of this mixture? Well remember that the concentration is like the strength of this liquid. Kind of think of it like temperature. If you were to mix something that was at 70 degrees with something that was at 30 degrees, what would be the temperature once you mix them together? Well we can't really say for certain without knowing how much of each one you have, but we can say it's going to be between 30 and 70 degrees. So just like that, when we're mixing something that is very strong at 70% with something that is weaker at 30%, the mixture will be somewhere in between those two percents. We definitely want to stay away from the idea that we can add these concentration percents. They're really a measure of how strong it is, and when we're mixing up two, the final concentration will be somewhere in between the two. But there are other amounts that we can say are added up together. The total volume in our first amount with the total volume in the second amount. So for certain, our mixture would be the amount of the first one with the amount of the second one totaled up, added together. And even the amount that is the chemical, the concentration, not the percent, but the actual amount of it, those two can be added together as well. The actual amount of the chemical can be added up for the final amount of the chemical. And the last thing before we move on to some examples, we know how to calculate the amount of this chemical in the total volume. Since the amount of the chemical in there is a percent of the full volume, the amount will be the volume times the percent, or the concentration. So our total volume multiplied by the concentration, taking that percent as a decimal, will equal this actual amount of the chemical in the solution. And for sure, these chemicals are mixed up in the solution, but it's helpful for us to think of them as separate quantities, so we can envision them this way. Now, as we begin to look at questions involving mixtures of this type, we'll want to be setting up equations that utilize this formula for each amount that we're working with, that we're mixing up into a final amount. So we'll say that if we want to total up our amount, the volume times the concentration of each individual ingredient will add up to the total volume times the concentration of the final amount. So we're going to be setting up equations where each term is for an ingredient, and we want to see the product of the volume and the concentration. Thinking of setting up this equation, it's very similar to the equation that we had for interest on accounts we would do principal times rate, basically a whole times the percent, and we'd be totaling up interest. Now we're taking volume and concentration. Still, it's the total times a percent, and we're adding up the actual amount of the chemical that we have in the ingredients to total up the amount that's in our final mixture. 
So let's go to our first example and build on these ideas. How many liters of a 10% solution should be mixed with 5 liters of a 50% solution to make a 32% solution? So first we should remind ourselves that if we have something that is weaker at 10%, mixing with something stronger at 50%, the final concentration will be somewhere in between. So just a quick check to make sure that things are making sense. Next we'll think of setting up our equation where each term represents one ingredient and we're looking for the volume and the concentration. How many liters of a 10% solution is our first ingredient? 10%, but we don't know how many liters we need, so we'll use the variable x. We're mixing it with the next ingredient. We know it's 50%, and we also know how much we have, 5 liters. Now let's pause here for a second to break down our work a little bit more. We have two ingredients. We don't know how many liters we have in the first ingredient, and we know that it is a 10% solution, so it's a relatively weak solution. Our second ingredient, we know exactly how much there is, 5 total liters of this ingredient. And we also know how strong this solution is, it's relatively strong, 50%. And while we don't know exactly how much we have of the first ingredient, so we'll use the variable x, we know that multiplying our entire volume by the concentration will give us the part the chemical in this ingredient. If we think about separating the chemical out from the solution, we'd see only 10% of it in this solution, while we'd see 50% in this solution. But back to our equation, remember we are trying to add up each individual ingredient to end up with the final mixture, and here we'll also need to show the volume and the concentration. Now can we figure out what the volume would be of this mixture? We're adding these two amounts, one we know is 5 liters, the other one we don't know, but we're using x so we can say that combining these two, we're adding these two amounts, that our volume would be x plus 5. If this happened to be just 1 liter, we would end up with 6. If it was 10 liters, we would end up with 10 plus 5, 15 total liters. So x plus 5 can represent the total volume that we have in our mixture. When it comes to the concentration, the question is asking for us to find a specific concentration, 32%. So the equation that we will be looking to set up will be basically looking at the actual amount of the concentration that we have. 10% of this volume would be a very small layer at the bottom, probably even a bit smaller than what my drawing looks like. It's only 10%. 50% from our second ingredient that we know we've got 5 liters of it. And when we combine these two, the amount that we have here will be a combination of the amounts in the original two ingredients. And the way that we find this little amount, the actual amount of the chemical, would be saying what percent of the entire volume is it. So 10% of unknown amount for our first ingredient, but we know our second ingredient, 5 liters, and the chemical it makes up 50% of it, and those little pieces, these little pieces of the chemical will add up to the amount in our final solution. And that also is found by the total volume times the concentration. Since we knew x and 5 were the amounts of our original two ingredients, x plus 5 is the amount in the final mix. And the problem says use 32%. Now we have an equation that we can simplify and solve. The first term, 0.10x. The next term, 2.5. Be cautious where we have two terms in this expression, so we need to distribute 0.32x plus 1.6, multiplying 5 times 0.32. Now we're solving for x, so let's aim to get our terms with variable on the left side and numbers to the right side. So I'll subtract a 2.5 from both sides, and that 1.6 minus 2.5 leaves minus 0.9, and now we will subtract this 0.32x each side. Of course, lots of ways we could go through getting to this solution, but I'm choosing to get my variable here on the left side. And lastly, we will divide both sides by negative 0.22 to finish solving for x. 
we get a decimal answer here, 4.0909. This repeats, so I will just round it to the nearest tenth, 4.1 liters. Here's our next example. How much 20% solution and how much 80% solution should be used when mixed up they'll make 500 milliliters of 35% solution? So again, in each ingredient we want to write out the amount, the volume that we have, and the concentration. The first ingredient is 20%, the next ingredient 80%. We don't know how much of each to use, but we do know that it will give us a total of 500 milliliters and that 500 milliliters is a 35% solution. So we'll use an idea that we had used with investment problems when we know the total but we don't know how much is in each individual ingredient or account. We'll set X for the amount in one ingredient and if X is used in one ingredient then the difference 500 minus X would be the amount of the second ingredient. So the two combined would equal 500 milliliters we'll make one x, the other left over after we take away x, 500 minus x. Here's the equation. We'll multiply these terms and simplify. Be careful that we will distribute here with two terms in this expression. Now we have some like terms on the left side. Positive 0.20x with negative 0.8x combined negative 0.6x. We'll bring down the plus 400 equals 175. Next we're subtracting 400 from each side. Negative 0.6x equals negative 225. Last we'll divide both sides by negative 0.6 and x equals 375. So we needed 375 milliliters of the 20 percent solution. The 80 percent solution we're left with 500 minus x so that x was 375 500 minus 375 leaves us with 125 milliliters of the 80 percent solution. And one more example. How much pure acid should be mixed with 300 milliliters of 25 percent acid to make a mixture that is 60 percent acid? Again, we're looking for the volume and concentration of each ingredient. First, pure acid. As a concentration, that's actually 100 percent but we don't know how much we're going to use. So there's our concentration, one whole, or 100%, and X is the volume, how much we're going to use. Our second ingredient is a 25% concentration, and we're using 300 milliliters. Our final result is going to be 60% acid. It doesn't tell us exactly how much we need, but we know that we're mixing 300 milliliters of the 25% acid with X amount of the 100 percent. So X plus 300 will have 300 plus X as our total volume, combining the volume of the two individual ingredients. And since one of them is unknown, we'll have to have this expression 300 plus X as our total. Now let's solve this equation. Here's a 1X plus 75 equals, and be sure to distribute here. 180 plus 0.60x. Now remember this is 1x so as we start to solve this equation I'll take away 0.60x from each side to move the variable onto the left side of this equation and that will leave us with a positive 0.4x. I'll bring down plus 75 equals 180. Next we'll subtract 75 from both sides and now divide by 0.4 x equals 262.5 milliliters.